If a presidential primary were decided by decibels instead of delegates, Bernie Sanders looks like he'd be a clear winner in New York State. Uh, there's some video from his overflow rally last night in Buffalo. About 8,000 people, as a matter of fact, inside the alumni arena on the University of Buffalo campus. Another 3,000 outside. Listen to that roar. Buffalo, thank you so much. So there you go. On it goes. Keith Bogue in for another of our weekly primary primers. Good morning, Keith. Good morning, Heather. Great to see you. And listen, we might as well pick up on that because there's Bernie Sanders in New York, the battle on for the Democrats, Hillary Clinton and, Bill, uh, and, uh, and Bernie Sanders very much targeting those delegates for New York. And Hillary Clinton still on her way to the delegate win, she hopes. But if she's getting there, Keith, she's likely not taking the subway on that ride. Take a look at this video as we get started. We just had to show you that again. That was a real struggles and then the SNL parody on Saturday night. But anyway, a little levity for us as we start. They are both targeting New York. They want it badly. And qualifications has become the latest battleground, Keith. Well, yeah, I think that was probably a, a bad move for Bernie Sanders last week when he suggested that perhaps uh, Hillary Clinton wasn't qualified to be the president of the United States. She has, whether you like her or not, uh, one of the most detailed and impressive resumes for anyone who's ever won, run for office. And as someone said, what is it that Bernie Sanders wants from her that she doesn't have on his res her resume for her to be co considered qualified? Does she need to be the mayor of Burlington? Bernie Sanders, of course, was the mayor of Burlington, but that seems like a pretty uh, minor accomplishment compared to what Hillary Clinton has done. But what really happened there was that Bernie Sanders gave an interview to a newspaper in New York where he was questioned. Uh, he was under greater scrutiny probably than he has been in this whole campaign, and he really didn't do very well. Hillary Clinton drew attention to that and said perhaps he had thought all of these things through, which Bernie Sanders understood as her saying he didn't have the experience or the qualifications to be president. So he retaliated since he's had to, uh, since then he's had to walk that back a bit and say, as he did in the last couple of days, that what he really meant was that uh, some of the decisions that she has made in her political career indicate that she really doesn't have the judgment to be the president of the United States. Different thing altogether, but, you know, I don't think he did himself any good at all with any of that discussion. So how do you see things from the Democratic side of things on this morning? Is it still pretty much looking like Hillary Clinton on track to win in the numbers department? Yeah, she's on track all right. She may be even better than on track. Um, what's going to happen in New York very likely, likely is that she's going to win big there and she's going to win uh, a lot more delegates because of that. And that's been the problem for Bernie Sanders all through this. When Hillary Clinton wins, she often wins big. When he wins, he doesn't win big enough. And because the uh, Democratic primaries are decided by proportional representation in terms of allocating delegates, he needs to win bigger than he does even when he does win in order to catch up to her. So she still looks like she's mm -hmm. got a very, very good chance of winning uh, the nomination with just the pledged delegates, to say nothing of the superdelegates, uh, which he has like an overwhelming majority. So the path to the nomination for Bernie Sanders is really no clearer than it has been um, at any point in this contest, notwithstanding the fact that he's run a better campaign and done better in national public opinion polls than anyone ever thought he would. And in fundraising, too, extraordinary mm. donations, record yep. amount, three times the number of people donating to his campaign, as did in 2008, to Barack Obama. Let's flip to the Republican side of things, because the quest for delegates and the elusive majority number is plaguing Donald Trump as well. We've been playing all morning a clip from him complaining about how the system is rigged. Let's have another listen to that. A millions of votes ahead, which they don't even talk about. They never even mention it. They talk about delegates. And I'm hundreds of delegates ahead, but the system, folks, is rigged. It's a rigged, disgusting, dirty system. 
It's a dirty system. So that's what he's saying. He thinks, Keith, does he not, that anyone who gets the greatest number of, of delegates should win, whether or not it's a majority or not. Forget about decades of political tradition in the United States. And he thinks it's rigged because the cruise strategists have outflanked him in a couple of states. That's absolutely true. Colorado, uh, the cruise people were much, much better on the ground than Donald Trump's team was. And I think some of the evidence that points in that direction is the fact that, that Trump has made changes to his campaign. Look, he might be right about the system, but if the system's rigged, it's not rigged against him. He is playing by the same rules as any other candidate there. They all knew what the rules were or should have known what the rules were before they went into Colorado, and he just got out maneuvered. So, you know, if we're all playing by the same rules and somebody else wins, you can't really say that the system is rigged against you. But I think it's important for him to continue to make that argument. I think it, it, it's... Um, from a tactical point of view, a rational thing for him to do. He's heading into a campaign where he believes that the party is going to try to work against him to, in his words, steal the nomination away. Mm -hmm. So it makes perfect sense for him to want to discredit the system as early and as often as he can, because uh, that argument may be something that he depends on heavily or more heavily as we go through the primaries and particularly heavily when we get to Cleveland. When we get to Cleveland, let's talk uh, in conclusion today about some really interesting buzz in Washington. What is happening with the speaker, Paul Ryan? We're going to show him. He is apparently reading some exclusive reporting from Washington, meeting with top donors next week. He's released a video. He's delivering some speeches, waiting to be drafted, perhaps. Should all heck break out in Cleveland? I mean, are we seeing an unofficial campaign going on? This is where America can well, I mean, there's so much that is remarkable and special about this. First of all, um, you know, it does look like he's running a campaign. If you look at the video that was released by his staff, uh, it was just a speech on Capitol Hill, but there are all kinds of different camera angles. It's a really polished piece of work, exactly the kind of thing that you would have if you were running a campaign. When he says no, he's not going to be uh, a candidate for the presidency. He is not completely unequivocal. But anyone thinking about this would, would figure out pretty qu clearly that if he were running for president, he couldn't say so. He couldn't say so because that would unite uh, the Trump and, and Cruz and Kasich supporters against him because they already have questions about uh, whether the, the process is, is as democratic as it should be. Uh, and I think those candidates are all in agreement. And Paul Ryan is on the record, as a matter of fact, as saying that the nominee should be someone who has contested for the nomination, not someone who's dropped in at the last moment. But, you know, in the, um, the school of thought about keeping all of your options open, because who knows what's going to happen when we get to uh, the convention, certainly chooses Paul Ryan as perhaps the most appealing of all the people they could have on the ticket in November. And that seems to have a logic of its own that says, well, then he must be running. But really, even though it makes some sense in terms of the interests of the Republican Party. Right. It doesn't really make a lot of sense in terms of the interests of Paul Ryan. It doesn't look like a good place to be at the top of the ticket for the Republican uh, candidate in this year's election. Maybe another year, and maybe that's what this is about. So interesting. In a campaign season that has turned our expectations on their head, again, we conclude with stay tuned. Who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> Keith, we'll look forward to our next conversation. Thanks so Love much. It. Take the care. weekly primary primer in Keith Bogue there in Washington.